Hi, good, good afternoon. Um, thank you. So um, we'll start in 12 minutes, okay? Yes, sure, ma'am. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. We'll start the free webinar. Am I audible? And is my screen visible to all to everyone? Hi, Dr. Desri. Welcome to the webinar. Yes, you're audible and your screen is visible. Okay, so let's start now. So good afternoon, everyone, um, or good morning in your part of the world. I'm Dr. Adesiri. I am MRCOG1 mentor from MedExam Expert. So we are conducting this web webinar to uh, let you know, to let the students know or our potential students to know how we conduct our live session. By the way, our uh, long course for MRCOG part one has already started. But the first live session will be on the 15th of February. So for those of you who wanted to join, you can still join because the live session has not yet started. And if you have any questions about the course, um, the back end team uh, will be there to answer your queries. Okay, so we will be doing a webinar on biostatistics. As everyone knows, um, the syllabus for biostatistics is the same for part one, part two, and part three MRCOG. And understanding a screening test is a very favorite exam question. It's a favorite exam question by the Royal College. So it is very, very important for you to understand what are these screening tests, how to put up a two-by-two two table, uh, how do you measure the screening test performance. On, and of course, at the end of the session, we will be testing your knowledge by uh, uh, giving you sample questions. Okay. So let us go first to the reference. I have used this medical statistics made easy uh, and the USMLE by Kaplan. So let's, let's go first to the definition of terms. A screening is a process of using tests to permit early detection. So why do you screen? You do screening so that you detect the disease early. And once you do the screening test, uh, early diagnosis means early intervention. So a screening is a process. And a screening test, sometimes called medical surveillance, is a medical test or procedure performed on members of a defined population. When you say defined population, so you determine what population you are using. So when you say defined, this could either be a normal population, it could either be a deceased population, or it could either be both, a random population. You don't know whether they are normal or diseased. Okay. And when you say screening test, screening tests do not diagnose illness. So you have to remember this. A screening is different from confirmatory tests. Okay. So screening tests do not diagnose illness. And a screening test has only two outcomes. It could either be positive or negative. No in between. Okay. So positive is presumed by the test to be diseased and negative is presumed by the test to be well. So why the word presumed? Presumed because this is just a screening. So once it becomes positive by the screening test, you have to do several confirmatory tests to confirm if, the, if that individual is diseased or not. So what are the samples of screening tests? So you have... If you wanted to know if a person has a urinary tract infection, you screen using urinalysis, right? And how do you confirm? You use urine culture. So this is the first example. So these are your screening tests and these are your gold standard tests. So urinary tract infection. So let's go to the to the screening test that is important to the ob um, So you have here, what else? Cervical cancer. So how do you screen cervical cancer? You use pap smear. And once you get the result of the pap smear, you confirm by either colposcopy or biopsy. So this is what a screening test means, okay? So when you say screening test, we are talking about sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, and the negative predictive value. And I know all of you are familiar with the classic two by two table. The most common problem that is encountered by our students is um, if you are presented with a classic two by two table, it's very easy to compute, right? You just have to put the uh, to put to put the values in the formula. The problem comes in when you don't know how to put your two by two table. So remember, 
the one technique in putting up a two by two table is that the test is on the left side. Okay, the test is on the left side. Wait, I'm, I'm sorry because my it's very sensitive. Okay, the test on the left and the disease on the top. If you are comparing two tests, the new test on the left, these are the screening tests, and the gold standard test on the top. If you are talking about risk factors and outcome, you put the risk factors on the left and the outcome on the top. Okay, so this is how you put your two by two table. So let's discuss what is inside the two by two table. What are the cells in a two by two table? So the cells in a two by two table, you can see here disease, positive, negative, true positive, false positive. So on the left side, you only have positive and negative. This refers to the actual screening test results. Or oh, remember that the, the test is on the left, okay? So when it is positive, so you put here all the positive tests. And the negative, you put here all the negative tests. On the top, you can see true and false, right? True and false. So why do what do you mean by true? True, the person or the subject has a disease, and false, the, the person or the subject has no disease, okay? So what does true positive means? True positive means that the person has a disease and she's tested positive by the test. Okay? So people, this is people who are correctly identified as positive by the screening test. When you say true negative, these are healthy individuals who are correct, correctly identified by the test as negative. So false positives are healthy individuals, but they are misclassified by the test as positive. And false negative are deceased people who are misclassified as negative. Okay, so these are your two by two tables. So how do you measure screening test performance? Let's now talk about sensitivity and specificity. Okay, you can interrupt me anytime if you have questions, okay? So when you talk about sensitivity, Okay, so the common mistakes by students is that they always mistake mistaken sensitivity with positive predictive value. Okay, so by definition, remember, sensitivity is done on a deceased population. That means your subjects are deceased. Positive predictive value is done in a random population. That means you don't know if the person has the disease or not. Likewise, specificity is done in a healthy population and negative predictive value is done in a random population. So sensitivity is a proportion of people with the disease who are correctly identified by the screening test as positive. So you can see here, Proportion of people with the disease, they have disease, okay? And they are correctly identified by the screening test as positive. So in the exam, part one, part two, and part three, uh, usually they ask about the, the term for part one and part two, they ask for the definition of the terms. Uh, they ask for the formula. Sometimes you will see here true positive over the formula is like this or you can also write the, the formula as A divided by A plus C. So in the table, this is your A, this is your B, this is your C, and this is your D. Okay? So A over A plus C. That means in sensitivity, we only use the left column on the two by two table. Okay? So remember that so that it will be easier for you to memorize your formula. So this is the meaning or the definition of your sensitivity. Now, let's go to your specificity. If specificity is done in a healthy population, and you can compare it with negative predictive value, which is, compare, uh, which is done in a random population. 
Okay, so proportion of people without the disease or healthy who are correctly identified by the screening test as negative. Okay, so the formula for your specificity is true negative. Over true negative plus false positive. Okay. And we use the right column, uh, the right column in the two by two table. So when you uh, remember the formula, remember that sensitivity on the left column, you only use all these formulas and uh, specificity on the, on the right column. Okay. So now let's go to positive and negative predictive values. So when you say predictive values from the word predictive, so I told you positive predictive value and negative predictive value, you use it in a random population, right? You don't know whether they are diseased or they are healthy. That's why the word predictive, you predict, okay? The test predicts. So it's a measure of the test, which represents the percentage of test results that match the diagnosis of the patient. These values are predicted this prevalence in the grievance population. So when you say positive predictive value, these are the proportion of people with a positive screening test who are actually diseased. So you can see the difference. In sensitivity, in sensitivity you get the disease and then you do the test. In positive predictive value, you do the test and then you will determine who are actually deceased or not. Okay, so the test comes first in a positive predictive value is screening test. So this is the definition of your PPV or your positive predictive value. And you use the upper row formulas. And so you can write also your positive predictive value as A over A plus B. Okay, so when you increase, this is just, this you need to memorize, okay? This you need to memorize. So when the specificity is increased, the positive predictive value is increased, okay? Ne negative predictive value is the same. You use the lower portions for the formula. So it is the proportion of people with a negative screening test who are actually healthy. So for... Explaining the difference between specificity. Specificity, you do the test on a healthy population. And then you do the test. And then they turn out negative. Unlike in negative predictive value, you do the test first. And then you confirm if they are healthy. So this is the basic difference between your specificity and negative predictive value and sensitivity and your um, positive predictive value. And your formula can be either the ABC letter. This is both important when you are taking the exam, okay? Because sometimes they ask like this or sometimes they ask like D over D plus C. Okay. So what are the other measures of screening test performance? You have accuracy and prevalence. So when you say accuracy, accurate from the word accurate so that you can relate it uh, in the general terms. When you say accurate, it is almost perfect. Okay. So this is the proportion of screen people who are correctly identified by the screening test. Okay. Correctly. So these are the true because they are correctly, correctly identified. They are diseased and they turn out positive. They are healthy and they turn out negative. And the formula is true positive plus true negative over the total population. So this is your main diagonal, okay? You will use the formula here, okay? So you see here, you use the diagonal formula. So the location on the two by two table is the main diagonal. It can, use, it can be used to summarize the overall value of the test. Of course, when the test is accurate, that means the test is reliable. Okay. Now let's talk about prevalence. When you say prevalence, it is the portion, proportion of the screen people who have the disease. Okay. So that means these are the people who have the disease, right? So this is your formula. And 
over the total population. So proportion of screened people who have the disease. So these are all the diseased individual versus the formula. You have to memorize the uh, memorize the formula of the prevalence, okay? Because sometimes uh, you can encounter scenarios in the exam that they will give you only the prevalence of the disease and you and the sensitivity and specificity, and you have to compute and to complete for uh, the whole table, okay? This one you have to memorize, okay? So your formula for your accuracy is your A plus C over A plus B, plus C, plus D, okay? So now let's go to likelihood ratios. Actually, this is outside the topic, but because um, the formula for likelihood ratios uses specificity and sensitivity, so we are discussing a little bit about likelihood ratio, okay? Ma'am? Yes? You told the formula about accuracy or prevalence. Mm -hmm. A plus B over A plus B plus C plus D. It is of accuracy or prevalence? Prevalence, dear. You get it now? Doctor, yes. Pre accuracy is? Diagonal prevalence is this one. So accuracy is A plus D. These are your true positive and your true negative over A plus B plus C plus D. So this is your accuracy. Prevalence is A plus C over A plus B plus C plus D. Okay? So likelihood ratios, this is the expression of how many more le or less likely the test result is to be found in a non-disease or disease compared with a disease. So you're just comparing the ratio between your sensitivity and your specificity. I know for all of you who already passed uh, part one exam, okay, you 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 already know the formula for likelihood ratios, okay? So likely, positive likelihood ratio is sensitivity over one minus specificity. It is the proportion of deceased people to that of non-deceased. So this is the disease to that of non-deceased with a positive test result. That's why it's positive likelihood, okay? And negative likelihood ratio is the proportion of deceased people to that of non-deceased with a negative test result, okay? The same formula except that you transfer the one from the sensitivity, you can see here. The one is here. Okay, so this is very, very long. No? For the, in the exam, you will see a scenario like this and you, you feel bad because you have to compute for the sensitivity and specificity. And then you, that's the only time you can compute for your likelihood ratio. But if you know your formulas well, because statistics is uh, mathematics, uh, it will give you immediately uh, correct answers. If you know how to put up your table, how to fill up your given, how to use your formula, then... It's an ECPC part of the exam. Okay, so this is the screening test diagram. Okay, these are the, this is just how a screening test diagram looks like. These are the true negative, true positive, and the overlap are the false positives. Okay, so now if you don't have any questions, we will practice some questions. Do you have any questions with the formula? I know you are all bright students, okay? So uh, this is how I conduct my biostatistics workshop. We regularly do biostatistics workshop twice a year, uh, one month before the exam. And for those who um, attended the, um, who, those who enrolled in the regular course and the progressive course, the biostatistics workshop is free, okay? We give it for them for free because they are part of our uh, enrollees. Okay, and for all of you who are not aware of our YouTube channel, we have a YouTube channel. We have some webinars there for MRCOG 1, 2, 3, and other exams that you wanted to take for MCOG, MRCPI. But for biostatistics in particular, I have done uh, understanding study design, how to choose the correct study design, understanding the forest plot, and now uh, understanding screening test. Okay, 
So there are three webinars in my statistics in our YouTube channel. If you wanted to check it out, you can check it out, okay? So let's do this together. So there's a new screening test that is applied to a sample of 1,000 people in the population. Based on the data in the following table, can you, com can you tell me, you don't need to compute, you just tell me, okay? Can you tell me what is the sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, negative predictive value, and so on? So sensitivity, what part of the table? It is on the left side column, right? So what is the formula? Can you tell me the answer on the options here? You can open your microphone. So this is A. This is B, right? This is C, and this is D. This is your true, positive. This is your true, negative. This is your false, positive. And this is your false, negative. And when you say sensitivity, you, you use what? B, left, column. Okay, so what is the formula here? Sensitivity. Anyone? Can anyone guess? What is the option? The, excuse me, the correct option? Anyone? No one. It is, Sensitive. it is what? A and C. A and C? Why A and C? Uh, remember, A, A and C, yes. Okay, A and C and what? Sensitivity is A over A plus C, right? Okay. So that is A over A plus C is 90 over 100. So it is, is B. Okay. So specificity, I'm running out of screen. Specificity is what? D over D plus B. So this is what? 840 D over D plus B. This is D plus B. This is A plus C. Oh my God, children. B plus D. This is A plus B. This is C plus D. And this is A plus B plus C plus D. Okay, now I give everything out. Okay, so what is the answer for specificity? Nine hundred. Eight forty over nine hundred. Okay, so that is H. Okay. <clears throat> B over B plus D, okay? So positive predictive value. Any one of you can remember the formula? A over A plus B. Very good. A over A plus B. So what will be the answer? 90, 90 over, over 90 over 150, 150, it's A, okay? So for the negative predictive value, this is easy, huh? This is a very easy table, very easy question. Negative predictive value is what? D over D plus C. Okay. So what is the answer here? You just have to choose. D over D plus C is D. 840. 840 over 850. 50. So G. Okay. okay. Accuracy. Okay. Accuracy. What is the formula for accuracy? A plus D over A plus B plus C plus D. Okay. So what is the value? A plus D is how much? 840 plus 90? 930 oh, over 1,000. Okay, <clears throat> 930. I. I, okay. So prevalence. Formula for prevalence. A plus C. A plus C over? A plus B plus C plus D. Very good. So what is in the option? 100 over 1,000. And that is letter? K. K. So where is the true positive?
तो वो पॉजिटिव सेम लेटर ओ माय गॉड चिल्ड्रन ट्रू नेगेटिव वे इज द ट्रू नेगेटिव ट्रू नेगेटिव एट फोर्टी एट फोर्टी एल फॉल्स नेगेटिव वे इज फॉल्स नेगेटिव गाइस ओके बिफोर यू कैन सॉल्व कॉम्प्लिकेटेड क्वेश्चंस यू हैव टू प्रैक्टिस योरसेल्फ आंसरिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर स्लाइड okay you have to know where your true positive is where you have to know where your false positive is you have to know where your false negative is you have to know where your true negative is you have to know the total population you have to know all the positive screening tests all the negative screening tests all the disease all the healthy you have to know the prevalence you have to know the accuracy okay i i i never even tell you what is false negative rate and false positive rate because i don't want to confuse you okay so now let's answer this question a physician interviews an 18 year old female patient who mentions that she just received a negative syphilis test okay so this is an 18 year old female patient with a negative syphilis test from the county health department she describes her sense of relief after receiving the test results she was, she was so very happy that she the tests were negative why why is she have, happy because she dec- discloses that she is a sex worker okay she is a sex worker who who works the stroll four to five nights a week she has been tricking for the past 18 months typically she has oral or vaginal sex with five to eight customers per night for a higher fee she will have sex without requiring her customers to wear a condom so you can see the her relief after seeing the negative test result okay on the basis of these findings if you were the physician what uh of this uh characteristic of the screening test you will be most concerned about so what will be your answer here she was tested okay so you she doesn't have the disease yet So this is a random population, a random individual who you don't know whether she has syphilis or not, and she gets tested. I told you when you use this random subject, you will think only about positive predictive value and negative predictive value, right? So is automatically you can eliminate these three. Okay, so you choose between the two. Okay, and it says here it's a negative syphilis test. So, what do you think does the screening test measure? Negative predictive value. Very good. So the answer here is negative predictive value. So the physician should be concerned about the negative predictive value of the test. Why? Because this is a person who is at high risk of having sexually transmitted infection. Yet. the screening test result says she is negative so she the physician should question the negative predictive value of the test okay so the answer here is d next question we have a 50 55 year old man who visits his primary care physician with a complaint of urinary infrequency examination finds 1 cm nodule on his prostate gland the physician orders what A screening test right prostate specific antigen because the uh, physician was be able to examine that she has benign prostatic hypertrophy so um she ordered a prostate specific antigen serum test by common standards the psa level is more than 4 is considered abnormal so when the third when the result turns out to be 4 it is considered abnormal using this standard his test has a sensitivity of 80% and a specificity of 90% a recently published epidemiologic article found out that in a cross sectional study that 10% of the man 
of his age have prostate cancer. The result on the patient's PSA is 7. So what is your best estimate of the likelihood that this man actually has the prostate cancer? So when you encounter these kinds of questions in the exam, uh, uh, you panic right away, right? So you have to analyze. So you have here a sensitivity. You write down your formulas. You write down your given. So you have a sensitivity of 80%, a specificity of 90%, and she's asking of likelihood. How will you how will you compute for your likelihood ratio? Sensitivity over one minus specificity. Positive so posi likelihood. Okay, positive likelihood ratio is sensitivity minus one minus one minus specificity. Okay. So how do you compute this? Sensitivity, you put let's put 0 0.80. Okay. Okay. And then 1.90. Okay. Uh, 1 minus 0.90. So can anyone use their calculators to compute 0 0.80 divided by how much? 0 0.10. Is that the correct way? What will be your answer? 0 0.80 minus 0 0.10 is 0 0.7, right? Mm -hmm. So why is 0 0.7 not in the answer? Anyone? Why is 0 0.7 not in the answer? Because it's multiplied by 100? No. So what do you think this 10% is? What is this? What is the 10%? 10% of this man, of men at this age has prostate cancer. This is your prevalence. Okay, this is your prevalence. Okay, so in order to answer this question, I know it is a little bit uh, difficult question, okay? So in order to answer this question, you have to use all this given, okay? The test has a sensitivity of 80. 80 of what? And 90 of what? 90% of what? Okay, so you have... To compute the sensitivity and specificity from this 10%. So let's assume that we have a total population of 100, just to make computation easy. Okay, we have a total, of, total population of 100, and 10% of the population is the prevalence. So that means that are the disease. So these are your 10%. Okay, and it says that the sensitivity of this test is 80%. So you get 80% of this 10 that gives you 8. Because the sensitivity is the true positive, okay? And it says the specificity of the test is 90%. So 100 minus 10, you get 90, okay? And you get 90% to get your true negative, true positive. And then that's the only time you can compute for the positive predictive value. Okay, so here you can see here what is your best estimate for the likelihood. So that means this question is not asking for likelihood ratio. Okay, so everyone will think about it. Everyone who encountered this scenario, they will think because they encountered the word likelihood and they have the formula sensitivity and specificity. So they compute immediately of the likelihood ratio. The reason why 0.70 is not there because this is not the, the one that is being asked. And the answer, that's why the answer is not here. So you can see here. So what is your best estimate that the likelihood that this man actually has prostate cancer? So that is the predictive value, positive predictive value of the test. Because this man doesn't have cancer yet. So this man is a random population. So that's the clue. She is a random individual. She does, he doesn't have cancer yet. So if you want to know the likelihood that he has prostate cancer, then you are looking for the positive predictive value of the test. 
not the negative predictive value. So you wanted to test a random individual, okay, and then do the test, then you are doing positive predictive value, okay? So the answer is 47 or letter D. So the technique in statistics is keep your keep calm, okay? Analyze the question carefully. Analyze if it is done in a random population, in a healthy population, or a, a diseased population. Then with that in your mind, you know immediately what are you looking for. So when it is done in a diseased population, then that is sensitivity. If it is done in a healthy population, then that is uh, specificity. If it is done in a random population, then it could either be positive predictive value or negative predictive value. Okay, so let's answer this question. 300 women with PCOS and irregular periods underwent a screening test. Okay, so I'll, I'll teach you the trick. 300 women with PCOS, that means these are diseased, right? Underwent a screening test. So I told you diseased, test, what are you looking for? Screening test. What are you looking for? You do it in a disease population and you do the test. Specificity. Sensitivity. Disease and the test. Okay. Sensitivity you do in a disease population. Specificity you do in a healthy population. So in the test above, 90% of those without endometrial car carcinoma were correctly identified by the test. Okay. So what you can see here, Without endometrial carcinoma, 90%. So this is healthy. And then correctly identified by the test. So what is this? This is your specificity. Specificity. Very good. Okay. So next question. A publication assesses a new diagnostic test for thyroid cancer. Which of the following terms would reflect the number of cases of thyroid cancer that is correctly identified by the test. Accuracy? No. Sensitivity. Very good. So that is sensitivity because you do the diagnostic test in patients with thyroid cancer. Right? So you are testing here the test. So you wanted to know if this test can correctly identify those people who have ca had a thyroid cancer. That's why this is a favorite question by the Royal College because a lot of people got confused just by analyzing the question. Okay, so next question. Which of the following epidemiological terms describes the proportion, proportion of individuals with a positive screening test who actually have the disease. So you can see here, test first before confirmation of the disease. So you are looking for what? Positive predictive value. Very good. It's E, positive predictive value. So this is how you analyze the scenario, okay? So in summary, these are your formulas. Okay, so these are the definitions. Memorize, if you wanted to uh, make good score in your statistics, memorize the formulas, memorize the definition, memorize the ABC representation, okay, and practice and practice and practice more. So this is what we do in our course. We give a lot of questions. I think we have, also we have, uh, I think in our uh, website, we give, uh, I think, 200 practice uh, by 200 uh, practice by, by statistic exam questions, practice exam that you can access for a minimal amount. You can ask the back end team if you wanted to avail of these practice questions or you wanted to enroll in the course or you wanted to attend the workshop. So we are about to end our session, our webinar. Uh, so please, uh, for understanding the screening test, um, keep your calm. Okay, when you encounter, especially in by statistics, when you encounter a long question, just relax, analyze the question properly, write down your given, uh, replace the given in the table, write your table properly, okay? 
for every topic in biostatistics, there, there are different techniques. For example, the study designs. Okay, I explained that in the webinar of uh, choosing the correct study designs. There's a different technique. There's also a different technique in choosing the correct statistical test, which is very, very important for part two exam students. Okay. And for the screening test, this is both important because they know, the college know that it is very, very confusing, especially between sensitivity and specificity and positive predictive value, negative predictive value. That's why uh, this is a long, uh, this uh, requested webinar on, on biostatistics. Okay, so please, uh, if you don't have any questions, I think we can call it a day. If, if you have questions about the course, you can now uh, send message to... Excuse me, please. Yes. Uh, yes thank you. Very nice lecture. Can you share the slides, please? Which slide? Uh, of this lecture, this presentation. Can you share it? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, no, not the slides. The, the presentation will be yeah, available. This presentation. This, I mean yes. the title of this presentation. Yes, the, the presentation, as I mentioned, will be available in our YouTube channel. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Very interesting. Yes, welcome. Thank you for sparing your Fridays with me. Okay, you don't have any questions? I hope I see you in our courses in, in, and in my biostatistics workshop. Okay, bye guys. Inshallah. Bye. Inshallah. Bye bye.